breaking news from Washington. Late this afternoon, President Obama's formally enacted the end to the ban on gays serving openly in the military. The overnight shooting where four people were hit, including the security guard, has now shut down this 24-hour game room. We found the perfect family-friendly night on the town here at League City's Concert in the Park for Citizens Appreciation Day. If you're thinking about buying a home, mortgage rates are going up, which means it could cost you more. I'm here with comedian superstar Carlos Mencia for the opening of his new restaurant, Maggie Rita's. And a reminder as you drive around town this weekend, those red light cameras are back on. As Norwegians mourn the deaths of 76 adults and teens, investigators are coming through a 1,500-page rambling manifesto the self-admitted terrorists wrote. <laughs> The long-time rivalry between TCU and SMU runs deeper than football. We don't like SMU, so it would be fun just to beat them, just, just for that sake. Real, true hatred between TCU and SMU. This competition is all about money. Pound the Ponies is a race between TCU and SMU to see who can raise a thousand donations from young alumni first. Even the Chancellor and Super Frog have been in on the action and they've made a video to share with our young alumni asking for gifts. Okay. On behalf of TCU, we're making this appeal to all of our recent alums. We're asking all Horn Frog young alums to participate in the first ever Battle for the Iron Skillet Challenge. Some young alumni are hesitant to donate since they just graduated. And we all were kind of like, oh man, we don't want to give more money to TCU. You know, we all just graduated not too long ago. We don't, you know, they don't need any more of it. Even those alumni who can't give much say they understand the impact of donating to your alma mater. I think it's important just because it really shows that you loved your school. Making a donation can even impact the value of your degree. It's so important that ranking systems like U.S. News and World Report actually use it to rank the universities. Young alumni have until Thursday, September 29th to get their donations in. The winner will be announced at the Iron Skillet game on October 1st. Brittany Rainville, TCU News Now. TCU students put their artistic talents on display by decorating large concrete horned frogs for a competition and a new tradition. Underneath it all, there's so many ways to be a horned frog and that we represent a lot of different things, um, but it's very cool. First year students say they look forward to this tradition because it allows them to get involved with homecoming. I think it's awesome. I just really brings the community together. I think everyone has a lot of school spirit and all the um, sororities and fraternities are getting really involved and everyone on campuses as well, so it's fun. Winners were chosen by staff members who judged on organization, spirit, creativity, and artistic merit. Phi Beta Phi came in first in this competition, followed by the Quidditch Club in second and 80 Pi in third. Freshman student Savannah McDonald said her sorority decorated a frog, but they aren't taking home any titles. Pi Phi, I heard, was the winner, and we congratulate them, but, you know, we can, like, be winners together because you have the moral victory. Philip says traditions like this one can be used to fuse alumni and student activities. Hopefully eventually we'll be able to use it as a scholarship fundraising opportunity and have different alumni purchase them. Although they are no longer on display in the blue, you may still be able to catch a glimpse of these concrete critters around campus. Brittany Rainville, TCU News Now. I just want to pay them for their trouble and get them back home as fast as possible. Lucky and Hopscotch. The two beagles who ran away from home were recently found by a neighbor who lives nearby. But that neighbor is refusing to return the pets to the Hunt family. I knocked on the door and asked the lady if she did find beagles. And she said yes, but she didn't have them any longer and to get off her property. The neighbor told Angie Hunt that she legally adopted the dogs from Houston Beagle and Hound Rescue when they were found several weeks ago. Angie says the dogs have tags with her information but she was never contacted. She says she even posted missing ads on several websites, one in particular that is affiliated with Houston Beagle Rescue. They tell the public to post their dogs that are found on PetHarbor.com. And although she does not wish to sue either the organization or the person now taking care of the animals, she doesn't think this is a fair situation. In a case like this, Texas law could be on the owner's side since it's unclear whether rescue organizations have the right to impound. Rescue organizations commonly have the mistaken belief that if they have a dog for a period of days, some think three, some think five, some think six, 
then they become the owner of the dog. Texas dog lawyer Zandra Anderson has dealt with numerous cases of this nature and hopes the hunts will soon be reunited with their furry family members. And it doesn't matter who has the dog, she still is the owner. Brittany Rainville, Eyewitness News. She was scared. She was really scared. Families woken in the middle of the night to watch their worst nightmare come to life. They say, hey, come on, wake up, wake up. Yeah. It's, it's something wrong. And then we, we just come outside for, the, for, for my apartment and we left, we left everything. Residents watched as a fire tore through their homes at the Wood Creek Apartments in Northwest Houston around 3.30 this morning. 16 units were destroyed in all, leaving many with little to nothing left of their belongings. We weren't allowed in there. They said the ceiling would collapse. Okay. So I don't even know if we're going to be able to get anything out of there for her. So she's going to have to start from scratch on that too. Many were able to get out safely except one 42-year-old man who had to jump from the second story window. The doors were covered with fire. Like the only place he can get out was either the balcony or the window. And I think his closest area was the window. So he just jumped out. He is the only person with a reported injury and is recovering in the hospital with a fractured back and broken ankle. As for the rest of the residents who will begin rebuilding their lives, they feel lucky to still have them. If somebody lost their life, somebody died, it's horrible. Right now it's just things. We can't come back. It's, it's nothing. Brittany Rainville, Eyewitness News.